Hi there, you're watching the Gardens and Graveyard channel. My name is Charisma and today we are hanging out in the studio and we're going to talk about what we're growing in the next season in the greenhouse. So if you don't know already, we built a greenhouse last summer and this is my first experience growing in a greenhouse on a personal level. I did learn all about seed uh, seed growing and seed starting in greenhouses um, when I was in college, but that was over 10 years ago. And those were professional grade greenhouses that had all the bells and whistles. This greenhouse that we built is a Palram Canopia hybrid. It is um, plastic, essentially. It's not a glass greenhouse. It's um, not heated and it doesn't have any electricity other than you know, like if we bring in an extension cord or something like that. So it's, it's basically just an elaborate cold frame, which is perfect for what I really wanted a greenhouse for. Um, number one, it created an aesthetic in my backyard garden that leveled up the way the garden looked in so many ways that we just absolutely love the structure being there. Um, I'm really big on places looking beautiful and aesthetically pleasing and creating a sense of sacredness to the spaces that I occupy. And that greenhouse absolutely did that. Um, the other thing that I'll be using our greenhouse for is um, hot weather crops that I can't grow. So. We live on the Oregon coast in a zone 9A, but because we are in a very temperate climate on the central Oregon coast, I barely get temperatures over 75 in August. And at the same time, I don't really get snow very often. And if I do, it only lasts for a day or two. So I don't get those freezing temperatures and I don't get those really hot temperatures. So everything always stays kind of even keel and pretty wet. We have long, wet winters and springs. So my growing season is pretty short and I don't get the opportunity to grow um, tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and squash um, at the level that I would like to experience. So what I'm hoping, um, or citrus, so what I'm hoping is that I could grow those things in my greenhouse over the summer. So while a lot of people grow things in their greenhouse um, uh, winter production to extend their winter um, growing season, I am going to be growing mine to have a successful summer growing season. Well, I get plenty of bright sunlight um, in that location where the greenhouse is. and before we built the greenhouse two summers ago, I did grow tomatoes, but I got a lot of leafy production and like maybe a dozen or so tomatoes um, in like September. So I put them in the ground um, just after Memorial Day. Three months later, I got a dozen tomatoes. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to see, um, a better production than that or a more consistent production earlier production if it if I start getting fruiting if I start getting fruit earlier I have an e expectation that I'll get fruit longer um, so that's my hope for the greenhouse but at the same time because we have all this extra space to start seedlings I'm definitely going to be using the greenhouse to start seedlings in the next couple of weeks. Some seedlings will have to stay in the house in our seed growing station that we built and I'll link that down below so you can see how I made a seed seed production area um, underneath the bar of our kitchen because it was the most out of the place out, out of the way place that I could find that I can um, have a bunch of seeds growing for you know weeks on end and that were easy to care for and you know accessible to a sink with water and all that kind of stuff so um, some of the seedlings will definitely have to stay in the house because they just need warmer temperatures through their entire life cycle other seeds I'll be able to uh, 
just leave in the greenhouse from day one and other and then also I'll be able to use the greenhouse as a really good space to harden off my seedlings whereas I was um I'd take them outside and put them on the back deck and I'd bring them inside and take them out bring them in take them out bring them in with the greenhouse now I can take them from the kitchen production area straight into the greenhouse and um, put domes over them so they're a little bit more snug but inside the greenhouse will be nice and protected and warmer um, and I'll just be able to let them harden off there take off their domes let them be a little bit more cool and then I could just set them right outside of the greenhouse without the dogs bothering them because the area around the greenhouse is completely fenced off so um, the the hardening off and getting seedlings out into the garden is going to be a lot easier this year. Um, so, but I just wanted to touch bases with you all. I know you've been excited to watch us um, build our greenhouse and, and we've added a bunch of fun elements like a sink and a potting station and shelves. I have um, just a few more little things that I want to add into the greenhouse before production really gets started. One is I want to add um, gutter planters, which I think is kind of an exciting thing to add in there. And then um, I wanted to add, oh, I'm going to put a solar light in there, a chandelier with solar lights in it so that it's um, I, I can light it up in the early dawn because I do a lot of my work early in the morning and I, I need a light out there that I could work by. Um, and then, you know, in the fall, I'll, you know, it starts getting dark around three, four, as far as production goes. It'd be nice to be able to just go out there in the like late afternoon, early evening and work with a light. So I want to get a light out there. Um, we already have an extension cord out there because we have Christmas lights. So if we need to put a little small space heater in there, we could definitely do that. If I decide that um, I've got seedling, seeds that could be out there in the cooler weather, but just need a little extra touch of warmth, I could plug in a seed map underneath my um, seedlings. So the other thing that I'm doing uh, this year that's a little bit different in my seed productions is there, I haven't gotten them yet. so. Um, I'll share them with you when I get them and when we start some seeds, but I'm actually going to be using um, seed uh, seed trays that are self-watering with a capillary mat. I'm really excited to go this route uh, because especially indoors with the heater going, it's really hard. They either stay too wet with a humidity dome or they dry out really fast and, and die um, from the house heat. So I'm gonna play with um, starting seeds just in the greenhouse without a mat, with a mat, with humidity domes, uh, with capillary mats, without capillary mats. I wanna just try it all out. So there might be a lot of overlap on what seeds that I actually grow because I just wanna see um, and experience how seed production is going to look like in the greenhouse now and how much of it really needs to be in the house. So I will do like some um, that I absolutely, like I have to have them in my garden. Um, those will go in my kitchen, but I'll also do like maybe a dozen or half a dozen of them in the greenhouse and see if I could just do them in the greenhouse. Wherever I can simplify things in the future, that's like the best, right? So um, it's all gonna be a big experiment and I'm excited to get started. So I have a lot of seeds um, that I'm gonna play with this year. And I shared with you how I'm storing my seeds in a big um, three ring binder this year. I'm gonna see how well that works out. They've all been divided up by month. So January through December and then they're they're basically in like a baseball card um, you know these things these clear 
things so that the seeds just uh, come out like this. And um, I didn't uh, fill the backs of them very often because I like being able to read what it is without having to take them in and out. So it's just like, what do the asters need? Is this something that I can provide them with? So I haven't gone through them yet, um, but I can say what we're going to start in January. Some of these may be started outdoors. That'll be a separate video. We'll do indoor seed starting um, probably two or three times through the month of January where, um, you know, we'll do some experimenting. We'll do some tried and true. Um, and then I will also do an outdoor direct sow um, video for sure because I know there's some that are just going to go straight into the ground. I think asters are one of them. I'm not sure, uh, but we'll see. So in January, these are the seeds that I'm planning on putting in soil somewhere. Globe amaranth, asters, balloon flowers, Texas blue bonnets, Cosmos, um, several varieties of Cosmos, Crispedia, which I'm really excited about because um, I've never grown that before, but I want to because it's a really great dried flower. Delphiniums, Delphiniums are super hard for me to grow. I buy them like from a big box store already blooming and then they last for like two weeks in the garden and then they're done and then they don't come back for us. And I'm not sure what that deal it what the deal with that is. So um, instead of investing in that, I'm hoping I can just grow them by seeds and maybe get a better production, a longer production out of them. Um, yeah, I kind of want to up my delphinium game this year if I can. Um, all right, so we've got uh, foxgloves. Sea Holly, um, Helichrysum, Hollyhocks, Impatience, Chocolate Flower, Larkspur, Love and a Mist, Lupin, lots of Lupin, all different colors and varieties, um, several varieties of Marigolds, a Milkweed, um, a couple of different Milkweeds, Poppies. So the poppies won't get started in January, but we will put them in the refrigerator to have a cold, uh, a cold period in the refrigerator for six weeks. And then I'll start them the beginning of February. Um, lots of varieties of poppies. Okay. And then safflowers, scabiosas, daisies, sweet peas, and pearly everlasting so the sweet peas i almost always direct so and do pretty good with um but i want to see if there's any kind of like jump in production if i start them early inside um yeah so that's what i'm i'm kind of banking on there and then in february we have more seeds to grow in in uh like indoors and then after that we go into direct sow for the rest of the season um, except for zinnias I think I could do zinnias inside in February as well and I think I'll I think I'll do both do zinnias inside and outside um, just to see and probably in in the kitchen in the greenhouse and direct sow um, at the appropriate time um, just to see how it goes. Last year, I tried the cold, cool flower method where you put seeds, yeah, I'll set that over there. We, you put seeds in the ground, um, direct sow them in the fall. And the idea is that they'll have a chance to sort of like naturally crack open and start growing um, when they naturally want to start growing, when the, you know, temperatures get a little bit warmer, that did not work in my garden because every seed rotted because we are so wet here. 
So um, I guess I could have put like domes or cold frames over them, but that's just like another level of care in the garden that I am not up to doing, especially in the winter time. I don't wanna have to go out there and lift those domes up or water those um, beds or anything like that. So um, the cool flower method just didn't work out for us. Uh, the focus of my greenhouse production will be flowers, not vegetables. I'm not a big veggie grower. I don't have a lot of room. Like if I were to grow broccoli, for example, I could probably grow two broccoli plants <laughs> because they get so large and that would be all the broccoli or all the vegetables I could grow in the area that I could grow vegetables because uh, they just get so big. Um, and then, you know, that type of thing. I have a huge herb garden that if I was a big vegetable grower, I probably could grow vegetables there instead of herbs, but I prefer to grow my own medicine over vegetables. And I just work with a um, farmer, um, a local farmer, and I, I buy their their annual subscription boxes or, you know, go to a CSA and join their program. Um, whoever's doing it, my, my farmer that I've been going to for the last th three years, um, shifted gears and is not doing that this year. So I need to find a new one. Uh, but I'll still probably do that, uh, because I can get I, I'm also a canner. I prefer to can all my all my vegetables and freeze them. So I like to be able to have like a huge amount of vegetables. And in order for me to have the amount of tomatoes that I need for the amount of tomato sauce and canned tomatoes and stewed tomatoes that I can, um, according to the math, I would need to grow 56 tomato plants which is completely outrageous because I don't have that kind of room at all. I do want to grow a tomato plant in my greenhouse. I hope to grow a cherry and a beefsteak, and then I want to grow um, an eggplant um, and some peppers. Uh, I would love to try my hand at growing my own loofah um, and a pickling cucumber. I think those are the crops that I'll be growing in my summer greenhouse. And yeah, I don't, I don't find it necessary to grow flowers in my greenhouse for the summer because I can grow flowers out on the property and tuck them in here and there. Um, I just have to choose the right ones for our, our climate, which is what we all have to do. Right. Uh, but as far as hot, um, summertime veggies go. That's what I'm going to try to do in my greenhouse. I will grow some vegetables. Um, we definitely want to do a pumpkin, a small pumpkin patch again this year. Um, Spencer loves growing pumpkin. I really enjoyed having fresh summer squash. So we'll probably do that somewhere. And then, uh, you know, we have perennial vegetables like, um, rhubarb growing, already. I would love to find a place for um, asparagus. That's what I would really like to find, a, a location for a permanent asparagus bed. And then we grow annual vegetables like um, our root vegetables, potatoes, garlic, onions, beets, radishes, all those types of things do get tucked into the garden. Um, but we just direct sow those. We don't need to do those in the greenhouse. So Anyway, um, I know this is kind of a little like chatty kind of situation today. Um, I've been kind of perusing through some greenhouse books. Um, this book I picked up, a friend of mine gave this to me and I thought, oh yeah, I can use a greenhouse book. But what I've discovered is um, the majority of this book is all about using your greenhouse for production, like having a in ground, in ground beds and grow your food or flowers in the greenhouse. And that's not what we're going to do in our greenhouse. So 
Um, I might have to see if I can find a good, like, seed production cold frame resource <laughs> other than just experimenting, but experimenting is fun too. So if you have any suggestions on starting seeds in your greenhouse that is not heated um, without adding like a whole bunch of thermal stuff, like I really don't want to fill up my greenhouse with uh, jugs of water or, um, you know, hay or anything like that, we might consider surrounding the bottom half of the greenhouse or the bottom quarter of the greenhouse with hay around the edges um in in future years we'll see we'll see i'm, I'm not sure if i'll want to do that because the other really fun thing that we're going to be doing next summer for the greenhouse area is we are installing a faux flagstone um patio walkway so all around the edges of the greenhouse um instead of just putting pavers or putting down mulch i'm going to do all faux flagstone which we have a little faux flagstone porch in our moon garden or patio in the moon garden which i really love and i just want to continue it's kind of like cobblestoney more than flagstone because it's not very big it's like pieces like this um Anyway, it's going to be fun to add that little element in there that next summer. Um, that area is just getting so charming. It's super fun. I think that is going to do it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that we get to hang out a whole lot more in the coming year. I'm really excited to see how things develop over the next year in that greenhouse. It should be a lot of fun. And of course, I have no problem sharing my fails with you as well. Um, you know, that's just part of gardening. And if you're new to gardening and you're watching this channel, just know that I don't go into a lot of depth with um, the science of why I do anything, but I try to just give inspiration on how I do things. And I do a lot of things by trial and error, and I'd like to bring you guys along with me. So I hope that you are celebrating your life today and every day, and we'll see you in the next video.